we were impacting uh, factories that had been idle or close to idle for many, many years. We were hiring in places that had not seen hiring in a long time. It wasn't just the sewers. Uh, it was also the people that were behind the supply chain. That's Jerry Hamill on the far left, one of our key cotton growers, and his team of people that harvest and bring their cotton to market. He's a North Carolina-based cotton farmer. And uh, like many of these examples, he is uh, one of these sort of generational businesses that have been around for a long time um, in the apparel trade. Uh, the ginning and the yarning facilities, uh, Parkdale Mills, uh, in this case in Gaffney, South Carolina, uh, interestingly enough, one of the most modern, uh, maybe the most modern yarning facility in the world uh, in a tiny town that you might all know from the Peachoid, from the, uh, from the uh, uh, Netflix uh, political series. That town actually has one of the most more modern yarning facilities in the world in it. Um, to the yarners and impacting the yarners. Um, and up through the chain to uh, Carolina Cotton Works, our dyers and finishers, owned by the Ashby family, a uh, third generation family that has been uh, knitting, dyeing, and finishing fabric. We're now the largest uh, uh, customer of CCW. Um, and all along the way, uh, we found ourselves not only impacting the front end of the production line, but the layers and layers of people down the supply chain. Um, and that, uh, when you've spent your career in manufacturing, and you spent your career in, uh, at least in my case, uh, being removed almost arm's length from your manufacturing process, when you suddenly found yourself diving deep down into that supply chain. Uh, for me, it was a pretty profound experience and got me to rethink uh, what it means when you build a product, uh, what consumers value in making a product. In towns like Middlesex, uh, North Carolina, which is about 20 miles outside of Raleigh and Nash County, uh, when we first arrived in Middlesex in 2012 or 2013, unemployment uh, was north of 13%. It is a town that looks very much like other towns around Raleigh, uh, uh, lots and lots of old uh, vacant warehouses uh, that now suddenly were, uh, it's funny, I, I remember clearly going into this facility for the first time and it was just filled with parking spaces. I pulled right up in front, went inside, met the line supervisors. Uh, today, if you go to that facility, uh, there's no room left in the parking lot. They've actually moved into a field next door and the parking lot is overflowing there. Um, that's, a, that's an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing that we really set out about to do with a fairly narrow goal. We sort of looked at this thing and said, we want to do, consumers are driving something interesting. Uh, they are saying in industry after industry, uh, pay attention to the things that matter to us. Pay attention to the quality, pay attention to the value, pay attention to the brand values. Don't invest in anything else. That simple idea for us took us both down a path of uh, a manufacturing process that was fascinating to me and was interesting and had us impact a whole bunch of interesting layers of the supply chain, but more broadly uh, got me to begin to think about uh, what changes in front of us as technology begins to move into uh, not just uh, software and, uh, and businesses that maybe are more digital, digitally scalable, but into old world manufacturing businesses, what does that open up for uh, the consumer and their ability to have an impact on the kind of change or businesses that they want to support. Uh, I think that in all of you, if you have a badge on your, uh, in your uh, Google Zeitgeist badge, in there there is a, a sort of uh, archaic uh, note about a special gift at the concierge desk. It's a sweatshirt for all of you. Hope you go pick it up. Um, <laughs> when you... <laughs> When you get it, I hope you, know, I hope you look at it, you like the sweatshirt, hope it fits you correctly, hope you got the size right, all that sort of stuff. But, but equally importantly, I hope it stimulates some thinking about uh, what, uh, what the next wave of change is going to look like on the heels of, of technology, uh, and what does that mean for us as consumers, and how we can impact the things that matter to us, whatever that means, whether it's American manufacturing or something else, uh, how technology is unlocking the ability for us as consumers to begin to direct our dollars to things that matter to us. Thank you very much.